Looking for amazing products to help boost your first class lifestyle? Then head over to firstclasslifeshop.com where you can treat yourself to personal development books and workbooks, lifestyle affirmation cards, adult coloring books, mugs, notebooks, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, and more. All products were designed to help you master your mindset, walk in your purpose, and live your first class life because you deserve it. So treat yourself today at firstclasslifeshop.com. Again, that's firstclasslifeshop.com. The trauma because you have the mindset of, I need to make money in order to live and, su and survive and that's it. I can't, I can't enjoy luxuries. I can't enjoy the fine things in life because I make money to survive, period. But when you actually rewire your brain to say, I make money to enjoy my life and to enjoy riches, enjoy my family and to pay off anything that I need to pay off, your mind about money really changes. Like mindset is so real. Like the power of the tongue is so phenomenal. That's why I'm like, as I've gotten older, I do not play that. Like do not come around <laughs> and feel any negative nothing. Like I, if you had a bad day, just please go to sleep before you talk to me. Like I, I am not, I cannot deal because you are a reflection of the people you hang around. You are also a reflection of the words that they speak. You're listening to the First Class Life Show hosted by Lindsay Vertner, a holistic personal development show for high achieving leaders who desire to maximize their impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, and let's get started. Hey, hey, hey there. Welcome to another episode of the First Class Life Podcast, your personal development show um, that helps you develop as a whole person, you high achieving leader, you. I am so excited about today's show because I have the beautiful Lynn with me and we're just going to jump right into it so lynn welcome 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 good to have you here in the studios hey girl hey girl hey girl thank you so much for having me it's always a good time when i link up with you so i'm excited hey everybody my name is lynn abs aka the ultimate coach and i'm just here on a mission to help people live healthy happy and wealthy lives so Let's get into it, Lindsay. Ah, it's such a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes. Healthy, happy, healthy, happy, and, and wealthy lives. Yes. Absolutely. That is my mission. That is my that is my purpose on this God's green earth. <laughs> that is my purpose. And I'm sticking to it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna to stick it. to it with you because I love the happiness. I love the wealth. Now listen, as far as the health, I love being healthy, but I don't like working out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about you know what it's all about the mind when it comes to anything it's really about the mind because i'm not gonna lie to you there was a point in my life i didn't like it either <laughs> all right i did not like waking up the workouts especially i wake up early in the morning like i'm such an early bird so my thing was oh i'll wake up at three to between three to five a.m go work out doing it i used to be like oh my god i'm really doing this like this is real. Like I'm, I'm doing it. And then over time, it was just like, okay, now I feel uncomfortable if I don't wake up and do it. You know, so yeah. it's all a mind thing. It takes some time. <laughs> like, I'm like, it, takes some time. it takes some time. But with time comes progress. With progress comes success. So it is what it is. You know, yes. it's one of those things. With time comes progress. Come with progress comes success. Like. Look, I'm yep. already dropping gems and, and we just get started. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Love you here, man. as we just hop into this conversation, tell the listeners, the viewers, just a little bit about yourself. Um, get, let them get to know who you are. Cause I know that you are just this phenomenal woman and you, like you said, you help people be wealthy and happy and healthy. So <laughs> let the viewers in on who is Lynn really? Well, 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 well. <laughs> All right. So a little bit about me. Let's just say, oh, so for one, I'm 26 years old. And I, I really feel like I have to drop my age now because people think I'm just so much older than what I am. And I appreciate it, you know. 
Thank you. <laughs> However, no, I'm only 26 years old. All right. I'm married. I started the entrepreneur space back in 2018, right after I transitioned out of the military. Um, started off doing it's so crazy because I actually had a reflection moment yesterday that we could talk about later. But I actually started in the entrepreneur space back in 2018. And I started off in the beauty industry. So I was doing lashes, um, makeup, things like that. And that's actually how I made my first ever six figures ever. A lot of people thought it was because of me when I started tackling to the investing side. So after I left the beauty industry i won't say i left but after i kind of took a pause from it i gotta pause you, know, you. i gotta pause you for a second so <laughs> you was making six figures selling lashes not doing lashes so i was doing lashes like the little individual mink lashes and makeup like that was like my thing it was like what was it even called minks and makeup by lynn ibs <laughs> like i still have my original business card to this day it's crazy no it was fabulous fabulous is what it was called. It was Fabulash Minks and Makeup by Lynn IBS. And I think I was about two, I was 21 going on 22, I believe. And I made my very first six figures. And after that, it was uphill. It was literally up here from there. And it happened very quickly. Like I think it happened within like six months. It was crazy. And keep in mind, I was just transitioning out the military. Anybody who's ever been in the military or ever got out of the military per se, you know once that check stops, okay and i was not in the business of being broke i do not not i do not not like having money okay <laughs> i just don't i just cannot live my life like that i it, it, it does something to me and it ain't the best thing all right so i had to think about it and think about it quick so once i was out when i was actually in the military there's this process called a cap and it just pretty much teaches you how to be a civilian again in a sense and when i was going through that process i actually was going um through esthetician school so i had literally just like literally i'm getting out of the military in one month literally like weeks prior to me getting out i had graduated esthetician school and i was like all right i'm about to do something with this because i cannot be broke and i still got bills at the end of the day so we had to figure it out um once i launched that i actually took a break from it just off the strength of my husband he's still currently in the army and he was supposed to go somewhere we ended up not going a whole little story behind itself but um i took a break from it and i started investing and i tapped into the foreign exchange market cryptocurrency all, all those good things and then that's when i started making more than just six figures so it literally has been like a good financial uproar if you will like a nice little step 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 of more money more abundance and all that good thing which hey. i'm grateful for because you know the same way you can get things, the same way it can be taken away from you. But it's definitely been a journey. It's definitely been, I won't sit here and say it was an easy journey because it was not, but it was a very disciplined journey and it was a very self-taught journey and it was a very much so a learning progress, which I'm still going through, which I feel like we all as people still go through. You know, like we're, I always believe in the term that I'm a student always, and I actually got that from an old Forex mentor of mine. And she used to always say that, like, I'm a student always. And that has literally stuck with me for then and to now, for, like, for life. Like, I'm a student always. You're always going to be learning, always going to be adapting, always trying to grasp new things. And, you know, I'm just taking it wherever it takes me at this point. So let's see what. Let's see where it goes. You know? Let's Listen, see where it goes. First of all, that is awesome. To make six figures by the time you're 22, there are a lot of people that don't make six figures in a lifetime. So something that I thought about as you were saying that was, how was your financial situation as a child growing up? Like, did you come from penny pension, from living paycheck to paycheck, or was your family on the wealthier side? Like, what was that journey like? Was that normal for you to have that six figures, whether you managed it well or not? That's a whole nother discussion. But just right. from the beginning, what was that like for you? You know what's so funny? I actually had this question to myself a few months ago. Um, and for anybody who's like was born within like the third generation uh, family, meaning that your parents were born overseas or you and your family were born overseas, overseas, maybe you might understand where I'm coming from a little bit. Um, when I was not living in America, I lived a very wealthy life 
Mm. <laughs> I did. Like it was, and I won't say wealthy like I was out here like Jeff Benzo was wealthy. Okay, <laughs> but we love. Like I'm not going, you know, put it that far stretch. But you know, but you know, we we lived a very good life. Like my mother and father, we had butlers, we had maids, we had chauffeurs. You know, we, you know, I went to like good. We went to good schools, you know, things like that. So in my mind, it was just like that was that was the norm because everybody around us was living that way. You know what I mean? When we came to America, it was a different ball game. Mm. But my family never how can I put this? Even though when we moved to America, it was a different ball game, I started to understand what the struggle started to underlie, but my family never let us see the struggle. If that makes sense. Like I didn't even, until I started speaking out of my mouth as I got older, I didn't realize how poor I was in America until I started talking. I was like, wow. Cause let me even backtrack. Like when I first came to America, I was, I was young. Um, fun fact about me, I had to watch Sesame Street just to learn English to go to school. Okay. Like it was like it was that deep. Like it was like, girl, you start school in three months and if you don't know how to speak English, you're not going. So <laughs> where are you I'm, from? I'm, of, I'm actually originally from Nigeria, Benin City. So oh. yeah, that's that's my little progress there. Um, but I had to learn English through Sesame Street, you guys. That's a very fun fact about me. So anybody who knows me know I am like team. Sesame Street, that is like a dream of mine to like be on an episode of Sesame Street, me and Elmo just buddy buddying up, you know, having a good little conversation. But nonetheless, yeah, like I had to learn English very quickly. Um, and you know, over time as we moved to different states and different places, uh, right before I transitioned and, you know, went to the army and things like that, I moved to Brooklyn, New York. And you know, at one point we had a house, but then we ended up downsizing for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And it was me. <laughs> Let me break this down. It was me. Okay. I have two younger sisters. All right. I have my mom, my dad, my uncle, and my grandmother. Seven of us in a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, I never felt poor. I did not feel like I was, I didn't want, I didn't lack for anything. And that's the crazy part. Like, I didn't realize how poor, <laughs> in a sense, because, like, when I say this to other people, they're like, dang, you really came from the struggle. And But I never felt that struggle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, my family never made me, they never made it seem like we were poor. Because if I asked for anything, I always got it, for the most part. You know what I'm saying? So it, I never felt that sense of, Oh, I had to get it out the mud and I had to, nah, I I didn't lack. But when I got older, I realized that, wow, we really kind of did get it out the mud. You know what I'm saying? We we really did have to go through some some stuff. We went through some shit. (laughs) But I never saw it that way. And it's so crazy when I got older and I started understanding, you know, why my family decided to downsize and, you know, all these other things. And remind you, my uncle and grandmother was only there to help take care of us while my parents went to work mm-hmm. and, you know, things like that. And I was still in school and me and my siblings, we were about like 13, 16 years apart, you know? So it, it would, yeah, it was a lot of people in a one little ass apartment, <laughs> but we made it work, you know, like we made it work. We didn't lack for anything. If we needed anything, we, we still got it. So yeah, I hope that answered the question. I know that sounds like very roundabout, but that's really the God honest truth. Like I, I never felt like I lacked. And as far as like the financial literacy um side, I can honestly say for the most part, especially my mom mm-hmm. really instilled in me financial literacy. Like I remember be now we're gonna tell some secrets, all right? So, so we grown now. <laughs> hey. But now when I when I was look, when I was about seven years old, now I was out here signing checks. Like I mean, like my mom would sit me down at the table. And I'm I'm pretty sure there's some people who probably went through this. If I'm the only one there. But I sat down at the table and I remember my mom being like, Okay, well these this bill is due, this bill is due. This is when back in the day they had checks. Mm-hmm. Like their parents real live had checkbooks and they had to balance their checks. Balance right? balance their and all that, okay. So I remember my mom literally sitting me down, like, Okay, I need you to sign these checks for me because I'm tired. I just got off of work and these are the bills that's due. This is how much it's worth. This is how you sign the check, this is how you put my little signature on the check, okay? So get to it. And I remember being like seven, eight, just signing checks. So I remember the very first check I ever received. Um, I just remember looking at it, I'm like, oh, 
I know what this is. And it's crazy because, like, a lot of my peers didn't know how to sign their checks or how to cash their mm-hmm. checks. But I always thought, like, this is stuff that people already knew. You know what I mean? Like, I thought it was normal because my mom taught me at such a young age, like, how to balance your checkbooks, how to know which bill is due, how to sign a checkbook, how to write a check, you know, how to know if your check bounced. You know, like, she, she instilled that in me at such a young age. And even, like, my dad, like, you know, he really wasn't big on, you know, balancing the checkbooks, but he was very much so big on you cannot leave this house without a certain amount of money on you because God mm-hmm. forbid something happens to you. You need to be able to, you know, maneuver and not, you know, he called it the beggar's mindset, I guess. But <laughs> he was just really big on, he was really big on us never having to ask anybody for anything because him as a man and a provider that's what I have him for. You know what I right. mean? So he was, he always had that mindset instilled in us and we're all girls. You know what I mean? So he was really not with that. Oh, you asking anybody for anything as long as I'm alive. So <laughs> he was just always like, you know, here's this amount of money. This is what you're going to school with. You know, if something happens then I know that at least you know how to get from point A to point B by yourself and you're not like stranded or, you know, whatever the case may be. And even like with other family members, they kind of put their own little twist into that too and always instill in us like, you know, make sure you have money and make sure you're successful and make sure, you know, we didn't come to this country for nothing. So just make sure you're really on your game and work hard and, you know, go to school and push, push, push until, you know, the, that door opens for you and, you know, you're going to be rich and you're going to be successful. Like they always poured that into me. So when I got older, it was really like, all right, like you, you gotta you got to. Like you don't you don't have a choice. Like you 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 have to you either gonna be rich or you're gonna die broke. And I cannot die broke because my family will attack me. Like that was just like, <laughs> my whole mindset. You know? So it was just like, get it together, girl. Like you have I so, love that for was, you okay. because I think that just goes to show how you were able to accumulate six figures by the time you're 22 because you had that instilled with you. Now, I don't want any listeners or anything to feel bad because, you know, we don't, yeah, know, absolutely. We don't know, right? And so I remember whenever it was kind of a wake up call whenever I had went to college and then I was hit with these different things or, you know, just understanding like savings accounts and investments and all of those different areas financially. And there was a, a quick moment where I was like, well, I'm mad at my mama because she never put, like, set me up no trust or have, have any savings for me. But then I had to check myself and I was like, wait, I can't be mad at her for her not teaching me what something she that know. she didn't know. And so, you know, kudos again to you for having that that background where people poured into you financially. Um, Now, before we continue with that, I I definitely want to point out the mindset of it because you talked about you didn't feel the struggle. You didn't feel poor. And I think that is very key to point out the mindset of happiness and the mindset of abundance. And uh, the analogy, the visual that I can think of is like us being in this first world country, if we were to look on TV or, you know, see a village that maybe lives in huts or, you know, doesn't drive cars and have all the electronics and all of the things that we have in these first world countries, we look at them kind of often pity them like, oh man, that must suck. But then if you actually look, they're some of the happiest communities uh, and it's like, well, how can they be happy when they're living in dirt type of thing? Or even when you see homeless people and, and they're they're just happy and just joyful and abundant. And that goes to show it's a mindset. Money does not buy happiness. It definitely buys comfort and it definitely can make things a lot easier. But it overall, it doesn't buy happiness. And so I love that you said, even though y'all were broke when y'all came to America, you didn't feel that at all. And I think that just goes to show with the the people pouring into you, not allowing you to feel that and just keeping you um, spiritually and emotionally safe that where you didn't feel broke. <laughs> right. And it's so crazy that you say it that way because 
that's literally where my entire brand came from. Like when I started Crown Me Wealthy, it wasn't when people hear Crown Me Wealthy, they automatically allude straight to money. And that's not where my mission was at. My mission was it's kind of like a formula for me. Like you need to heal in order to transform, in order to now feel happy within yourself so you can attract the money and other abundance that you are worthy of having. It all literally does start with your inner self. Like it literally starts with you need to heal and become this happy, whole, better version of yourself before you can even start attracting wealth and before you can even start attracting all the other things that you want so badly. You know, if you're not happy within yourself, you're not going to try to do the things that make you healthy. If you're not healthy, then you're not even going to live long enough to enjoy your wealth. You know what I mean? So that's where my Crown Me Wealthy brand really stems from. Like just really having you understand that you have to be happy and whole first and healthy first. So before you can even enjoy the money, because I don't care how, and I, I'm literally a walking testimony of this. Like it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you're not happy, if you're not healthy, if you're not healed from things that you're still trying to not talk about or release or, you know, transform into this bigger version of yourself, bigger and better version of yourself, you're never going to attract your wealth. Like you are what you attract. So if you are still stemming in bullshit, you're going to attract bullshit. If you're going to stem and walk and talk and breathe like the wealthy person that you are desired to be, you're going to attract wealth. And as I got older and started understanding money mindset, because we know this, but a lot of people don't like you. There is such thing as, you know, having trauma with money. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people equate money with trauma. Like in order for me to live, I need money, which is true. But a lot of people have it in the mindset. Like if I don't make this certain amount, I can't pay my bills and now I'm in debt. And, and it just becomes this spiral thing. And now you're money always attracts the trauma because you have the mindset of I need to make money in order to live and, su and survive. And that's it. I can't, I can't enjoy luxuries. I can't enjoy the fine things in life because I make money to survive period. But when you actually rewire your brain to say, I make money to enjoy my life and to enjoy riches, enjoy my family and to pay off anything that I need to pay off your mind about money really changes. Like Mindset is so real. Like the power of the tongue is so phenomenal. That's why, I'm like, as I've gotten older, I do not play that. Like, do not come around me spewing <laughs> any negative nothing. Like, I, if you had a bad day, just please go to sleep before you talk to me. Like, I, I cannot, I cannot deal because you are a reflection of the people you hang around. You are also a reflection of the words that they speak. I do not have time. All right, I do not have time. So if you know you're going through a bad day, please go to sleep, wake up. Let's try again tomorrow. All right. If you know that you just have a certain mindset, please respectfully. You cool, but you got to stay over there because it's just like, like I said, like you are a reflection of the people that you hang around, but you are also a reflection of the words that they speak because distracted people distract people, mm. and you cannot distract me. I don't have time for that. Like mm. I'm like I'm on a mission to. Like I said, I'm on a mission to help people that want to be helped become healthy, happy, whole, and wealthy. If you are not in alignment with that <laughs> in no type of way, shape, or form, even if it's just not like regular support, if you are not in alignment with that, I love you, but you got it. Because <laughs> I don't have, like, 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 life is too short to be playing with y'all. I do not have time. Listen, okay? like, no. you, have time <laughs> so, you no, said no, distracted agree. people distract people and uh, if that wasn't a gym for the people i don't know what <laughs> was you have to be mindful of your surroundings and uh, we know we see you right here just glowing and happy and wealthy and healthy and i know i keep saying those like just in all out of orders but <laughs> we see you oh, and, cool. <laughs> and we've heard some of your background you know just being poured into by your family but i know personally that you haven't always had those moments where you felt happy. And so I kind of, I want to pivot and go into that because I know that there's somebody listening like, all right, yeah, it's easier said than done. And they also may think like, oh, well, this person, they're just always happy. They don't ever have any struggles. And it's like, no, every single person is human. We all go through things. We all have our moments. We all have our ups and downs. And so flipping the script a little bit, 
we were just talking about Look mindset and happiness and, and building that from within. But I know that there was a time where you didn't feel like that. You had anxiety, Ooh, maybe. you had <laughs> depression. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. And just like you said, you know, like, please understand that whether it's myself, whether it's Lindsay, whether it's anybody that you see in this successful space that they're in now, understand that they got here because they deserve to be here. And if you see them walking and talking and acting like the wealthy person that they are, it's because they deserve it. You know what I'm saying? They went through something that was horrible and turned that faith into triumph. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep that in mind first and always keep that in mind when you're looking at people that's successful, right? So just to even piggyback on that, there was a very, and I talk about this, I won't say all the time, but I do discuss it now. It's more than I, not more than I should, but I do discuss it more because I feel like it's so important. Um, there was a time in my life that I was in such a dark place, such a dark place. And this happened back in 2017 while I was in the army, transitioning out the army, even a little bit after. Um, I was just in such a dark, dark place. I was overweight. Um, anybody who knew me before like 2000, probably like before I graduated high school, pretty much knew I was like pretty small, pretty, I had like a little athletic body for the most part. I mean, I wasn't like all snatched and courageous or nothing, but you know, I, I, I looked all right. You know, I, I, looked good. So, I, you know what I mean? I was very really small and things like that. So when I joined the army and as I was transitioning out, I gained a lot of weight. I think the heaviest I was was like 220. 20 or 25 pounds and that was the heaviest i ever been in my entire life mm -hmm. not only that I, that was the most unhealthy i was ever in my entire life and i was just going through going through so much um within being in the military and just like my family and just like my personal life and all that just kind of the spew into one and it, i just literally exploded and there was a time that i tried to kill myself it was bad it happened in 2017 it was august of 2017 i would never forget it so and it's funny it actually kind of replayed in my mind a little bit um the other day and i kind of like had to even tell myself like wow like you came through so much but just to kind of deep into the story uh back in august in 2017 i pretty much had to go to the psych ward all right this is me being completely transparent with y'all like i'm about to tell y'all exactly like how this played out um i had a doctor's appointment Funny enough, I had a doctor's appointment and anybody who, especially if you go through military doctors, the, they, the first thing they always ask you is, are you, are you mentally okay? Are you trying to kill yourself? And I was on my way to my doctor's appointment. Kid you not, if you live in Hampton Roads, Virginia area, you know there's a bridge between Hampton and Virginia Beach. And I was driving through this bridge on my way to my appointment and i just remember just being in my car i forgot what i was listening to but something was playing it was like a, a song and it was one of my favorite songs and i just remember like the music was drowning out mm -hmm. and i was like already going through so much and i was like so sad i was crying in the car like everything was just starting to build up i was by myself i think my husband was like on a mission or something so i was just like very sad and like i started thinking about so many different things and i literally tried to drive my car off this bridge like mm -hmm. i just remember being on the like driving on the bridge and like something in my mind was like what if you just die today mm -hmm. who will miss you like that's literally what i said to myself i was like if you die today who will miss you and i said nobody and i remember just like turning my car to like get like on the little side that's like a little thing where you can kind of like park your car and since not park it but you know like the little side of where the bridge was and i just remember like just hurry like just skirt over and like almost hit another car like it was crazy and i just remember like getting out the car remind you at the time i couldn't swim so i was just like if i get off my car and get off this bridge and just die nobody will care anyway and i remember just this guy he was like i guess like driving the car he was like what are you doing and he was like i think he was with his wife or his girlfriend or something like that but he was like Oh my god i think she's gonna jump so he actually like got out of his car remind you it's backed up traffic on this bridge i remember he got out of his car and he actually worked for the people who i guess work on the bridge i guess that was his day off i don't know but he just happened to get out the car and he was like are you okay and i didn't say anything and he was like are you okay and he was like 
He's like, you're not okay. And then I just remember like, I just stood there. I didn't say anything. I was not there. Like I just like as like my body was there, but I I mentally, spiritually just was not there. I just wanted to go. It, it was bad. And I just remember right after that, I wake up. I was in like pretty much the hospital that was attached to the appointment I was going to anyway. They asked me a series of questions. I don't even remember what they asked me, to be honest. I just remember I was like, yes, no, maybe so. And <laughs> literally, probably like a few hours after that, I went back in the ambulance. I just remember being in the ambulance and I woke up again and I was in the psych ward. Mm. Went through the psych ward. That was, oh my God, so, uh, it was, it was very much a traumatic experience, but um, I just remember just going in there. They asked me these questions. I just felt so soulless. Mm. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I was so soulless, so lifeless. I didn't really care about what what, what the fuck was going on. I was just like, I'm here. Do what y'all need to do. And it's literally like I don't know if anybody who's watching this have ever been through a cycle, or especially through like the military. <laughs> it is such a sh- it's a shit show. First of all, it's such a joke. But you're literally sitting in a room. Right, you're sitting in the room. First of all, the room has no doors, the shower has no curtains. You're not allowed to like write in like pen, <laughs> like you can only write in pencil. And they give you like this journal that they want you to spew your feelings in. You have to go through these like these little classes every day. They make you take these meds every day, torture. And then as you're getting di- uh, diagnostic through the doctors or whatever, it's literally you in a room with like hella doctors, whether they're interns, MD, whatever. Like, it's literally you in the middle, doctors surrounding you, and they're all just typing on their keyboard. And I just remember just sitting there, just looking. And I'm just like, this is such a fucking joke. Like, that's what I said in my head. I was like, this is such a fucking joke. And how intimidating. How intimidating. It is very much so intimidating. Like, like, at that moment, I knew they didn't care. You know what I'm saying? But I was just there. I'm like, I'm going to just play along because I don't feel like going through I don't feel like going through no more than what I'm already here for. And I just remember them just typing on their keyboard. They're asking me questions. And I just busted out crying. And I wasn't crying because, like, I was having a breakthrough. I was honestly crying because what they probably thought that. So they was, like, just still typing. Like, oh, my God. But I was literally crying because, like, I was so frustrated and so angry that it really got to the point that I ended up there. And I was just so mad. And I was just angry and I was just ready to go and then after I left you know they diagnosed me with um severe depression and anxiety and some other things and it took a while it took a very long time for me to like pretty much heal from all of that and I remember just waking up I'm about to cry but it's cool y'all gonna see these tears it's fine because hey. this is real life you understand know this is real life hey. <laughs> like it's, like it's real life but um it um it did a lot like i wasn't wake there was times that i wasn't even before all of that that i knew i was depressed because i wouldn't wake up mm. i would sleep hours within a day i went a month without eating i yeah i went a month without eating i would go three to four days without brushing my teeth at a time i would probably take showers like once every two weeks I wasn't doing my hair. I let my hair mat up so bad that I, I, thankfully I didn't have to cut it off because of the girl who actually took care of my hair. You know, when I did start to feel better, she actually made sure I didn't lose um, a lot of hair, but I was not taking, I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. That's the God honest truth. Like I was just in the bed crying every day. And then, you know, I say this all the time, especially for those of you who have partners and, husbands, wives, whatever the case may be, be be very mindful of the person that you pick to spend the rest of your life with or a long time with because that can also play a part. And I'm very much thankful for the husband that I have. Like, I'm so thankful for him because, like, literally, like, when I was in that psych ward, as soon as he found out I was in there, I don't even know how, I don't even know how they even found that he found out that he was on a mission, first of all. Mm -hmm. And the army don't care where you at. Like, the mission comes first. Like, whatever. But I don't know how he found out I was in there. I guess they called him. But I kid you not, like, 20 minutes later, 
he pulls up with like a bouquet of flowers and he was just like, mm. I'm never gonna leave your side and I love you. And I'm like, you supposed to be at work right now. Like, you <laughs> get in trouble. He was like, girl, fuck. So, and, and so many words because my husband is very not, if anybody knows my husband, he's very nonchalant. Like, he's very calm. He doesn't really use profanity. But in so many words, he was like, girl, fuck that job. Like, like I'm here <laughs> okay, for like, I'm here for my wife. <laughs> Yeah, like, girl, girl, fuck that job. Like, it is what it is. And he came in there with flowers and, like, you know, we can only do so much because they don't let you, like, really do too much. You can't have your phone or anything. But, mm -hmm. you know, he was just, like, kissing me and comforting me and just, like, telling me everything's going to be okay and just asking, like, how can he help me? And I think that right there, you know, I swear to God, like, even if me and my husband were sitting like, would not work out for whatever reason, I'm not even about to speak that into existence, but whatever, he would still always be my best friend because he was like the only person that I felt like I had at the time, mm -hmm. you know? And I wasn't getting along with my family at one point. So it was just like, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was so hard. And I felt like I had nobody. And I think that's another thing too. Like when you really get into a space where you feel like you have no one to talk to or no one you can confine in or you feel like you can't trust nobody or whatever. Like, if you just feel like you're alone, you're going to start feeling that and it's just going to start reflecting in everything that you do. Like, you're going to walk and talk and breathe like you're just like this loner. And that's just how I was. Like, I just felt like I was so alone. I felt like I didn't have any friends and I felt like the people that I did have around me wouldn't even have understood where I was coming from, you know? So I just still, once again, even being in a room of people, I always just felt alone for a while. And, you know, anybody who saw me just, you know, they, they swore up and down I was happy because I still always tried to not mm -hmm. really project my sadness on people. So I literally had to walk around every single day putting on the facade because that's what it was. Mm -hmm. I was putting on the facade every day trying to be happy around others so they won't feel my sadness but still being sad in the process and then i just felt even more alone and at the end i just started to crack because it was just like this is just too much like i'm putting too much pressure on myself to be happy when i'm not and i just broke down and i just became depressed and like i said i wasn't eating i wasn't drinking water i wasn't i wasn't doing anything like i was literally just in bed every day and i just remember just being like one day I just woke up and it was like the next day like I remember sleeping for almost two days straight because I would just did not want to get up like the only time I would get up was to use the bathroom maybe to brush my teeth and come right back in bed and I would have like I bought dark out curtains you know the curtains that just make your room black all the time like I bought those so I just did not want to be fucking bothered like, I was just over it. And then, remind you, my husband still has to go to work every day. So, I can only imagine what he has to go through because he has to go to work and deal with these motherfuckers. And then he has to come home and make sure, you know, me, him being a good man that he is, he, you know, came home trying to see if I was okay. So, it was just, like, it was just a lot going on. And But I'm so thankful for him because at the end of the day, when I felt like I had nothing, he came through. Like, and that's why it's so important, like, when you're, like, getting, I know I, this is kind of off topic, but for those of you who are in relationships, looking for relationships, whatever, make sure you properly vet the person that you are trying to spend the rest of your life with or be in a long relationship with, because that can literally make or break your situation. Like, it literally can. Because if my husband was trash, like, <laughs> and I'm going to say it just like that, like, if my husband was trash and he just looked at me like, girl, get your ass up, you'll be fine. I don't even think I'll be here right now. Yeah, the truth. I don't. I don't even think I'll be here right now because he he gave me the little bit of hope that I needed that I thought I almost lost. And yeah, granted, I dug that out of myself, but mm -hmm. he kind of solidified it for me. Like even though I was trying to crawl myself out of this dark space, knowing that I had somebody who gave a fuck about me, in a sense, it was refreshing. It was. It was very much so refreshing. It felt good and. You know, I just tell anybody, like, if you know you're struggling mentally, if you know that you need help, don't be afraid to ask for help. Because even looking back in hindsight, the same people that I thought wouldn't even have been there for me, if I would have told them something was wrong, they would have been there for me. But in my mind, they w they wasn't. They wouldn't understand. You don't know. You don't get it. Da-da-da-da. So... 
you know, if you know you need help, and this even goes back, I know this is kind of off topic, the girl who passed away to um, Miss USA, 2019 USA, it's crazy when I saw that she committed suicide, because I was, I actually cried. Mm-hmm. I didn't know her personally, you know what I mean? I didn't know her personally at I'm all. I'm sure you probably you know, seen resonated her with that. Yeah, and it was just so sad. Beautiful, happy appearance, and then for her to commit suicide, I'm sure that probably suicide resonated within you a lot, because here you are, this leader, you know, you've already accumulated your wealth, and, and you know, you, you were doing the things that you had wanted to do, and then here you are in this slump all of a sudden, but you said, and I really want to make sure I point that out, is that you were still showing up and putting on this happy face for your friends and your family and, and everybody you were connected to, yet going home, and it was like you were taking that mask off, so I'm, I'm sure that mm-hmm. did affect you deeply. Are you loving the First Class Live show? Then join our private Patreon community. Not only will you help to support our ability to provide you with great content, but you can also get exclusive perks like bonus videos and resources, discounts, episode transcripts, and more. So what are you waiting for? Join today at patreon.com forward slash first class life. Again, that's Patreon. P A T R E O N dot com forward slash first class life. It did. And it's like, you know, like I said, I didn't know her personally, seen her in but for someone to be as gorgeous as she was, to be as successful as she was, to have everything that a lot of young women hope and dream for, mm-hmm. and to suddenly, and it was sudden. It's not even like people knew that she was going to do this, apparently, from what I saw. She suddenly decided, like, I'm not happy on this earth and just jump off, of, you know, wherever she jumped off from. So it, it, I was sad, man. It, that was very sad for me because I was just like, wow. And I remember when she won t- uh, Miss USA and I was like, oh, my gosh, she's so gorgeous. Like, you know, she just, you know, she has it all together. Like, this is the type of woman that I wanted, not necessarily her, you know, verbatimly, but this is the type of woman that I always want to allude to be someone who's poised, confident, happy, pretty in their femininity. Like that is what I, and I'm sure a lot of women did too. So it was just like, wow, like she was going through so much. And that just goes to show that people do not speak on what they go through. People do not always show you their bad side and they're not obligated to, let's not get it twisted either. But however, that just goes to show that everybody struggles within their own way. And if you know you need help, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, if you need help, please say something. You don't ever know who is willing to help you. You never know who is willing to be there for you. You know what they say, you know, speaking, it'll be given to you. Like, just ask, even if it's a stranger, you know what I'm saying? And to this day, that guy who pulled over, I talk to him to this day. I talk to him to this day. He actually texted me Probably on my, on my birthday because um he actually came to see me in the psych ward. Crazy, he came to see me. He came to see me. He asked me was I okay. I don't know how this man found me, but he <laughs> found me. And you know him and my husband, they don't you know I don't say they're the best of friends, but you know they talk every now and again. So for somebody who didn't know me, who practically saved my life and still check up on me to this day, you know that's a blessing within itself. So. Even if it's a stranger, man, like you just never know who is willing to help you and be there for you. And just know that although depression and anxiety and all these other mental, you know, things, although it is hard, you can definitely break through it. It's not going to be an easy journey. It's not going to be a pretty journey. It's not going to be a whole journey. You're going to start breaking shit, tearing shit apart, crying every day, hating everybody. Like you're, you everybody's journey is different but it's a journey nonetheless Mm -hmm. and when you dig yourself out of it it will be (laughs) it'll be one hell of a story that's (laughs) that's one thing i will say it would be one hell of a story but it's your story you know what i mean and it's something that you can say that you went through and lived by and just got through it man and you know i'll be lying if i say i still don't have my days on occasions but i still have to remind myself that I'm here for a purpose and I'm here for a mission and 
at this point, nothing can break my mission. I feel like the difference now between then and now is then I didn't understand my purpose. Mm. Now I understand my purpose now, and now I know what my mission is, so now I have something to move forward with. Back then, I didn't. I was just kind of, I won't say I was all over the place, but I was all over the place. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I didn't have a sole purpose. I didn't have nothing to attach myself to. Yeah. Now I have something to attach myself to, so I feel like if I leave, I'm leaving something behind, and then that, that scares me even more, so I just kind of like snap out of it and mm-hmm. be like, okay, you okay, just breathe. It's okay. You had a bad day. Work through it. Dance a little. Be happy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I didn't have that before, so now that I have that, it's, it's refreshing. It's cool. There were so many different points and avenues that we could turn from this discussion, like First of all, the divine timing with your angel, literally, that came and talked you out of there. You know, the onset of like, you're just driving and then suddenly you're like, oh, wait, maybe I should die instead of continuing to drive this car. Just so many different points that we could veer off into. Like, I swear it doesn't feel like we've talked this long and already it's like, (laughs) oh, Lynn, I'm sure all of the listeners are just loving you, loving you, loving you. Um, But I really want to find out like, what were those steps that helped you to essentially overcome uh, this depression? Because I know that a lot of people suffer in silence and you already mentioned, you know, not wanting to get help. And if it wasn't for those around you, which speaking of help, if you genuinely don't feel like that you have anyone to talk to, please make sure that you reach out because help is available. The suicide hotline number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is one 800 273 Eight two five five. I think they even have a chat feature that you. Yeah, they have a text feature as well. So yes. if you need a text and you don't like phone calls, they're willing to text you as well. So definitely hop on that. Definitely do. Mm-hmm. If you are feeling any type of way, even if you aren't to the point of feeling like you want to take your own life, please just reach out. Um, because as, as Lynn has already illustrated, like sometimes that point can come on suddenly and you never know when it may hit. So Lynn, what were some of those steps that you took to start to take yourself out of that mode or overcome? I know that you said it's an ongoing process and every now and then you'll have your days where you have to be intentional about reminding yourself like, Hey, this is not what we want. Um, but what were some of those steps that you started to take? That's, that's actually a really good question. So for me, it, the, the very first thing was establishing my self-love for myself, or at least having a plan about how I wanted to go about that. Um, like I was saying before, I did not love myself. Point blank period. I had gained a lot of weight. I was unhappy. I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like the way I talked. I didn't like the way I walked. I didn't like nothing that shit. Like, I just didn't. And that's just the God out of the truth. And that was one of the biggest things that I feel like I needed to change the trajectory of before I can even move forward. Because it's like, if I don't love myself, how can I love this man sitting next to me? How can I love the people around me? How can I love what I do? You know what I mean? So the first thing for me was just establishing some type of plan to create self-love and better self-love for myself. Once I did that, it was really more so establishing what my purpose was. So what what am I here to do? You know what I mean? Like, what is what? Am, why am I here? Why did I decide not to drive off that bridge? Why did I decide not to jump off the bridge? You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I could have still did it. Like, if he would have just said it, honestly, because he was holding my hand, if I would have just took three more steps, I could have just went in that motherfucker and been like, all right, this is a wrap. But... You know, I had to really identify what my mission and what my purpose is. Because your purpose is different from your mission. I feel like a lot of people don't see it that way, but it's true. Just because you have a purpose to do something, that doesn't mean that's your overall mission. Just because you have a mission to do something, that doesn't mean that's your everyday overall purpose. You know what I'm saying? So those two need a healthy balance of each other. So when I decided what my purpose was, and I was like, okay, my purpose is clearly I'm here to do something whether it's to teach, whether it's to love, whether it's to give somebody insight, whatever, whether it's to even just share something about myself that can help somebody else. Like, I have a purpose, not what is it. 
then when I realized what my mission was, it was just like, okay, cool. Now that I know what my mission is, now let me start to create a plan. So I created a plan of one, having some people to call or a person to call if I don't feel safe or if I'm having like, you know, one of those days, um, getting out every day, even if, and I, when I say getting out, I don't mean necessarily leaving my house. It took a, it took a while for me to leave my house. I'm going to be honest. Like it took a very long time <laughs> very, 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 very long day for me to leave my house. Okay. So we started off just me getting out of the bedroom and going into the living room. Okay, and I'm I'm being this is yo, yo this is me being honest, y'all. I don't I don't even, look. It was baby steps. I don't even think I've been this transparent about my journey in a long time. Listen, so the first thing I had to do was and let me point out very quickly little- for those that may have missed it because oftentimes we hold ourselves back. Because we feel like we have to have it all together. Like, let's say somebody in your same situation, they're not going to the grocery store and buying all their groceries. And so they feel like, well, I didn't do that. So I'm failing. But the fact that you said it started as simply going from the bedroom to the living room. And I always say progress is better than perfection. And every little thing that you do is building up to that space that you want to be. So I love, love, love that you share that. Just those baby steps. Like before I had to even think about going outside, I had to just make it (laughs) to the living room. So, all right. All right. I'm sorry. Go Uh, ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, no, seriously. And that's so true. Like baby steps is better than no steps taken at all. So my first thing was I had to Get and matter of fact, it wasn't in the living room. I had to make sure I get up and take a shower. Mm-hmm. Okay, when, when I took my first shower, like I know that sounds crazy, but it's just something about taking a nice, fresh shower that you just feel like a whole new person. Okay, so once I got out that mode of okay, I, I think I just it was like, okay, girl, you stink, get up, like just get it together. So I just like really just took my first shower. So that was the first step for me, like taking a shower. Then it was like, okay, leaving the bedroom and going to the living room. So we did that. You know, my husband would call me or text me, be like, hey, did you go to the living room today? Did you watch something today? Did you, you know, whatever. And, you know, so we did that for a while. And then it was, I had a balcony that was literally right outside the living room. So now it's like, okay, let's step into getting air. (laughs) Let's step into getting some air. So I was like, okay, I'll go to the balcony. And I used to get like very nice sun in the balcony and, I used to like just send the sun for at least 15 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. So that became like a thing of my routine, just making sure I got sun at least 15 minutes a day. And then I mustered up the courage. So we used to do date night a lot. And, you know, because of my insecurities within myself and just being super depressed, we, we couldn't go on date nights. So mm-hmm. my husband made it his thing to like, be like, okay, if you want to do date night inside or do you want to go outside? So I was like, all right, we're going to go outside. You know, we're going to go outside today. And so, you know, I'll go outside at night because, you know, at the time I did not hit my, my, my goal yet. I'm still not at my goal yet, but I look better now than I did before. I'm going to tell y'all the truth because y'all look crazy. But, <laughs> you know, I went outside, so I'll go outside at night. <laughs> All right. So we were doing the nighttime thing for a while. And um, I wouldn't go out through the day. I'll actually have him make the groceries and he'll, like, FaceTime me because I just was not comfortable going outside. So that was, like, our thing for, like, probably like three months and mm-hmm. you know when i did feel good about going outside again um i started getting more busy and more active and you know fulfilling my mission and that's when i first got into like you know the foreign exchange space and the investing space so i started like talking more and speaking more and you know people was asking for my presence so it was just like mm, outside no <laughs> <laughs> but um, I clearly started making things not that my thing, so I started becoming more comfortable being outside, and eventually I just started going back to my routine of just, you know, just self care just became everything for me, and you know, just finding little things to do, whether it was in my city, um, even if it was just like just me packing a lunch and parking my car in the park and just sitting there for a few minutes, you know, like that. I, just the little things of just practicing and executing <laughs> the self care was super important to me, you know. So I think once I established all those things and just started getting my mind back, reading more. Because anybody who knows me, I'm such an avid reader. I was a very avid reader, and I stopped. So that made me pretty sad. Fun fact: I own like 1,400 books. Child, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it, it can't be my husband. Me, but I've never counted, so 
Look, my it came so bad that I have an underbed library. Like my <laughs> husband built me an underbed library for my books. Like it's it's bad. But um, nonetheless, I started reading more. I just started going out to different events, like local events in my city. Um, and just getting a chance to like interact with people again was very refreshing, and just just the little things, like whether it was going to the park, taking a rest, not beating myself up mm-hmm. if I didn't accomplish a goal for the day. Um, just surrounding myself with people who really, who balanced me out, you know, because as, as, cause it does become a time like, yeah, although we are on missions and we have purposes and we want to help everybody, it gets draining. Mm-hmm. It does. It becomes very draining, especially when you feel like you're helping others more than you're helping yourself. Yeah. And I told myself, I just couldn't go into a new year, especially this year going into 2022. I, I, I. I ain't doing it. Like, that's just a guy on the shoes. Like, I'm just not. I'm not. Like, if I feel like I have to, it's one thing to help you because it's to fulfill your, fulfill my mission and to help you lead into your purpose. That's one thing. But if I'm over drowning myself to save you, that becomes a problem. Exactly. And I don't have time for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, superheroes, which I don't even, I don't even like that term superhero because I feel like at the end of the day, especially us as women, we have to, we can't be wearing the S on our chest every day. Mm-hmm. We have to take the cape off. That is, you know what I mean? So. Another discussion. I absolutely discussion. Okay. Like, <laughs> Superwoman is a fictional character with fictional okay. characteristics and fictional qualities that oftentimes we try to live up to. So I absolutely agree with you there. And I just love that you took those baby steps. Like you didn't try to do it all at once. And another thing that I kind of heard indirectly was that you did it afraid. Like you were uncomfortable a lot of times as you were taking those steps. And so I think that's important to point out as well is that sometimes we have to do it afraid. We have to be uncomfortable to get to that space that we genuinely want to be because, you know, we might not get to a place where all the fear is gone and we're completely comfortable. And usually if we are, then that means you kind of set the bar pretty low anyway. And <laughs> you need to believe deeper for yourself. But you made yourself uncomfortable even when you didn't feel like it. Uh, you did it even though you were afraid to do it as far as going out and starting to speak and all of those things. And that's just a good reminder that like, Sometimes the fear is not going to go away. More times than not, it doesn't go away. And so we have to do it afraid. Now, as we wrap up, I have um, a few more things that I want to talk to you about. Uh, So this is the First Class Life podcast, you know, that personal development show for high achieving leaders. And for those that are unaware, First Class Life is actually an acronym So every letter of first class life stands for a different skill or characteristic that you want to try to embody into your lifestyle as much as possible to create your first class life of purpose, fulfillment and happiness. Okay. And so now normally I would ask you, Ms. Lynn, which uh, characteristic you feel that you most align with. But from our discussion today, I feel like you are most aligned with self-worth and faithful. And what that means, obviously, we know self-worth. And you've talked about the very first step in creating your routine and overcoming the depression was to find that self-love. But as far as faithful, So that means that we have to believe in something bigger than ourselves, whatever that is for you. For me, that is God. I do believe in God. Um, But for whatever you, the listener, the viewer decides to believe in, it is so important to believe in something bigger than yourself because you talked a lot about Once you identified your purpose and identified your mission, that helps you to push through. And so just having that faith that, you know, things don't look so great right now, but it's going to work out for my good. And I know that I have this calling on my life um, that I need to see out because if I were to take it right now, then someone somewhere is going to continue to suffer. And so just believing that, you know, 
I have a purpose, even if it doesn't seem like it right now, and then being willing to go get that purpose. You agree with that? Like, that was my assessment. Of- I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I'm probably here. I'm not gonna lie to you. No, I definitely agree with it. And it's so funny that you said it the way that you said it because I literally live by that. Like, I literally, that's literally my slogan. Like, I am worthy for all things that is abundant and attracted to me because I am living in grace and this God's green earth. You know what I'm yes. saying? That is literally my thing. And as long as I'm faithful to my assignment, and faithful to what my purpose is, and I feel like I will attract that, and I believe that for anybody. So for anybody who's listening to this, I believe that for you too, but you have to believe it for yourself first, of course. So, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely listening. <laughs> I'm here for it. I agree. I agree. <laughs> no, no kind of pass here. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, what is next for you? What do you have going on? Uh, just, just let us know. Let us know. You know what's so crazy? So I actually... Last year, um, transitioning to this uh, year, I took a little break from everything because my husband was deployed for about a year, a little over a year, and you know, and we was moving from. I, I used to live on the East Coast. I know the last time I spoke to you, I think I was still living in Virginia. Uh, now I live in Seattle, so we literally drove from Virginia to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's another story within itself. I'm, I'm gonna have to call you. <laughs> we literally uh, just did this whole transition from the East Coast to the West Coast. So I had been taking my little hiatus, but I still have been working um, and for the most part um, and behind the scenes and everything. So I just recently launched my Getting Started as an Alkaline Vegan ebook. That actually came to me because uh, for those who don't know, I started my Alkaline Vegan journey three years ago, literally as I was transitioning to loving myself and things like that. And I just had to change. I had to change. It was for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to change my lifestyle, my eating habits and things like that. So three years ago, I did that. And I have been pretty much tracking my journey. Um, And I tell people all the time, I'm not on a mission to be like, stop eating meat, very bad. No, I'm not that vegan. I'm not doing it. I don't really care. I don't care about what you do. Like, do, do what you wish. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not that vegan. But I am here to help those who are insightful about it or want more information about it or need help or need guidance. So I just recently launched that January 1st. So I'm super excited about that. And just starting a whole new chapter within Crown Me Wealthy, um, taking more clients again. So anybody who's out there who needs a nice little self-love journey, just identifying your self-love, your self-purpose, your self-will, and just adapting that and just quantum living into this year, just a nice, better, healthy, wealthier, and happier version of yourself. <laughs> These courses are coming soon, baby. They're coming soon. And they're going to be super affordable. I've never been in the business of, well, I'm going to backtrack that statement. But I'm going <laughs> to say this. They just know they're super available. Okay, they're super affordable. <laughs> they're super affordable for the time being. Okay? Super affordable for the time being. Okay? Because that. And listen, at the end of the day, and I feel like we need to normalize this too, family. At the end of the day, if you're listening, business owners charge their worth, <laughs> okay? And I have helped hundreds of people already identify their self-purpose, their self-love, and their self-health and all this good stuff that we got going on in this God's green earth. So, yes, I'm going to charge you my worth, but I promise you it's super affordable. I'm not going to charge you an arm and a leg because in order to even feel comfortable and looted into a new lifestyle. I feel like you have to at least afford the lifestyle you're trying to elude. Mm-hmm. So and, and not gonna not gonna tell you about afford more. whatever we want to afford. We want we yeah. make that shift in our mindset and, and say, I can afford this. Now how can right. I afford this? Instead of saying, Oh, I don't have the money for this, it's no, change that negative talk into a positive, open ended, optimistic talk instead of saying, I don't I I can't afford this. That automatically is closing off all the options. Instead, flipping it to how can I afford this, then opportunities start to open up and you can see ways to decrease your current debt and increase your your current income or vice versa, whatever you need to do to afford what it is that you want. Because at the end of the day, we essentially do afford whatever it is that we want. It's what we're telling ourselves that we want, whether directly or subconsciously. Because that, that's a whole nother thing right there as well. Look, but we, I would drink my tea to that subconsciously, and why we find ourselves in cycles oftentimes. But let me not open up that can of worms. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
We got y'all another episode, okay? Yes. We got y'all on another episode. <laughs> so tell us, how can people reach out to you? How can they contact you? How can they find you? Let us know. Let us know. So if you want to contact me, hit me up. Um, all social media platforms is crown me wealthy and underscore living with land two different accounts obviously so if you want to find me twitter facebook instagram tiktok is everything is underscore living with lynn and crown me wealthy two separate accounts come to me as you wish okay now i ain't saying y'all come to me after hours y'all know i live on the west coast now so be mindful all right be very mindful all right don't be hitting me up after hours if you know you can't hit up your people's at a certain hour, don't hit me up. This <laughs> okay, be, be respectful of our times here. All right, but I do I do answer as much DMs as possible. Um, I'm actually about to stop the DM train only because I don't get to people as fast as, as I would like. So, but for the time being, you're more than welcome to message me. I do message people within a very timely fashion. Um, and just hit me up, connect with me. Don't be shy, talk to me. I do like to talk to people. All right. I've never been in the business of following people on social media and not talking to me, talking to them. Social media, social comes first. I do talk. So be, don't be afraid to comment. I'm not one of those people who don't respond back to comments or things like that. Like talk to me, like interact with me. I'm very, as you can see, I'm down, I'm down for a conversation. So don't be afraid to slide in, you know, in my DMs, you know, post anything. Like just, just hit me up. Just hit me up. Yeah. Her <laughs> One respectfully, not uh yeah, respectfully. Hmm, Cause she is married, happily married, okay? <laughs> okay. Don't get Unless told you that beat you up. Uh, that's between you, the Lord, and my husband, because I don't have time. All right. <laughs> that's gonna be beyond me. But um other than that, feel free to respectfully shout out my DMs. Let's have conversations, comment on the post or two, like. All that good stuff, all right? And I'm officially, oh, I forgot to tell you this. I didn't even tell you this. I'm officially starting my YouTube channel. I'm ah! finally stepping out on fear. I'm finally stepping out on fear. So for those of you who do not know why this is an exciting moment, it's because for the past six years, and I'm so mad it's been this long, for the past six years, I have been told, Lynn, make a YouTube channel. You know how to cook. And this is even like before I went vegan or anything. Even now, they're like, oh, you know how to cook very well. You have all these talents. You're so motivational. Like, you should make a YouTube channel about your lifestyle and just all this other stuff. You travel a lot. You, you know, make money. Da, da, da. You should really just tap into the YouTube space. And I was just like, mm, I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm not pretty enough for YouTube. Like, I used to think all sorts of stupid stuff, yo. But now I have finally decided to step out on the fear and and create my YouTube channel. So that will be coming up within the next 60 days. All right. So follow me. Don't follow me. We will have all her contact (laughs) info in the show notes. Okay. So I know some of y'all, y'all don't be reading and stuff, but it's all right. Like she has (laughs) said it, go back and push rewind if you need to push rewind. Um, But it will also be in the show notes so that you can see that and you will be able to contact her on all of the different platforms. And Lynn, do you have any final words for the people? Um, I know I got some some other questions I want to ask you, but That is for the Patreon members, okay? So if you want that good bonus content, I mean, this whole show has been juicy, 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 but uh, (laughs) we got some other very juicy things that we're going to discuss, but that's only for our First Class Live community. So make sure that you are subscribing to the Patreon, okay? So for the whole world, for everybody, do you have any final words? I would just say within 2022, and you know, repeat after me or just write this down or just listen to the change really manifest for anybody who's listening or and or watching this, that 2022 is the year of triumph for you, that this year you will care a lot more about your health, your wealth, and your happiness, and that you will just trust in your intuition to guide you into the place that you're destined to be. That's what I got. Hey, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for tuning in to the First Class Life Podcast. Make sure you tune in every week for new episodes. Remember, this is your holistic personal development show because you are a high achieving leader desiring to maximize your impact all while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. 
Catch y'all next time. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. But please be sure to subscribe to the First Class Life Show. And don't forget to rate, leave a review, and join our private community so that we can continue to provide you with great personal development conversations to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You deserve it. Do you want to be surrounded by other high achieving women who are working on their goals just like you? Are you looking for your circle that's passionate about their own growth yet still wants to see you shine? Do you desire to be supported through collaborations and connections instead of competition? Then Cowork and Chill is your place to be. Cowork and Chill is a hybrid of virtual co-working and virtual networking. It's a community of women who are striving to build living legacies. This is the space to create meaningful relationships with other equally yoked women where you're being poured into just as much as you pour out. So if you're looking for your crew for supportive accountability, then sign up today at coworkandchill.com. That's C-O-W-O-R-K-A-N-D-C-H-I-L-L coworkandchill.com.